Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Phone lines are open, 559-656-0317. You can also send your questions in to me anytime at questions at insurancehour.com. We've had a really jam-packed show, lots of questions, lots of answers. If you've missed any part of it, be sure that you go online and find where you can get a copy of it. We're everywhere. You can find us on all of the podcast platforms. You can find us on YouTube. Just search for Insurance Hour and you'll find where you can get copies of the recordings. You can also go to insurancehour.com. Of course, we'll have links there for pretty much everything. We are going through questions that have been submitted. And the latest question is as follows. It says... I lost a second home to a wildfire in California. The claim is large and still open. Coverage on my primary home in California was dropped. Seems no admitted carrier will cover my primary home due to the risk. But is it possible that insurance view me, not my primary home, as a risk? If so, is this even legal? Wow, that's an amazing question. So first, I want to tell you, I I am so sorry that you actually still have a fire claim open from one of those. I'm assuming it's one of the wildfires. Uh... That's awful. It it should not be open this long. I I, I don't know why that's happening. Uh, It might be time to try and check on that. I assume by now you're you're deep in it, so you're 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 well versed on what your options are and what your rights are. I don't think there's any reasonable reason at this point that you should still have a fire claim open. And I'm saying that with zero information, but I think I might be pretty close to being spot on. As far as you being the risk versus the actual location you're insuring. Let me explain how it works. When you are purchasing property insurance, there are two factors that the insurance industry looks at when you're looking at a home. So let's just say you're buying a new home, you're looking to get insurance on it. They are going to look at that property and they're going to look at characteristics of that property, right? They're going to look at prior claims on that property. They're going to look at where it's located, year built, square footage, type of roof, all that good stuff, right? In addition, they're going to look at you, right? Have you had claims in the past? What types of claims? Do you tend to have lots of claims? There are these two elements that go into the formula when an insurance carrier is looking to underwrite a risk. And I'll explain why and why it's not necessarily under it. Well, some of it makes sense and some of it doesn't. For example, there's been a situation where someone might be on the East Coast and they have a claim because their pipes froze. They're moving to Palm Springs. Probably not likely that they're going to have a lot of frozen pipes in Palm Springs. However, that still shows up as this person had a claim for frozen pipes. How should that impact their premium? Well, it depends on the carrier. Some of them might look at that and say, yeah, yeah, okay, that's not going to happen. Some of them might look at that and say, yeah, yeah, that was at a different house altogether. I don't care what the claim was. Some of them might simply look at it and say, yeah, this guy doesn't maintain his house and he had a claim. Three different ways to look at it. Three different insurance companies, three different outlooks. That is going to impact the price that you're paying. That is going to impact the availability you have to be able to insure this other property that you're looking to insure. Now, as I keep saying over and over, and I feel bad saying it, but I want to make sure everyone understands, because we don't have competition in California right now, because we simply do not have carriers offering coverage, You don't have the ability to, in essence, go to those three carriers and get three options based on three different ways of looking at your claims history. So if you are finding, uh, if you're having problems right now getting your property insured and you're saying, is it me? Yeah, it could be partially you, not you personally, but you because you've had a fire claim. Now, again, Normally, one fire loss, not wonderful, but most insurance carriers, and again, I'm speaking over years of experience, would look at you having one fire loss on a prior house, and that prior house was the prior house, especially if it was due to a catastrophe event. If a wildfire comes in and takes down your house, most carriers will look at that and not count that against you at all, because it's not even a kitchen fire. It's not a fire that happened because of some type of negligence or lack of you maintaining your property. It was a wildfire. It was something completely outside of your control. In the industry, they're called cat losses, short for catastrophe losses. And insurance carriers tend to try and separate those out from their general underwriting because they recognize that this is not something that's within the control of the consumer. Therefore, it's probably not indicative of future claims as well. 
Unfortunately, again, because we don't have a lot of carriers right now offering coverage, it's possible that the carriers you're looking at are, like I had said earlier today, they're simply going for the low-hanging fruit. They're saying, why should we insure someone that's had any kind of a claim at all when we've got thousands of people pounding on our door looking to get coverage because they can't get coverage anywhere else? It's pretty cold, but that is the reality that we're dealing with right now. Next question, we originally had farmers and then had to get the fair plan with farmers for a wraparound. The last year, farmers made the wraparound so, so expensive that our longtime agent had to find another insurer. They found Aegis. Now, it sounds like Aegis is a surplus line and we might not be covered if they declared bankruptcy. Is that correct? Okay, a few things I want to unpack here. First, understand that when you're saying wraparound, that's an actual insurance term. Most carriers do not offer wraparound policies. They offer what's called a DIC policy. There is a difference between a DIC policy and a wraparound policy, and it's a big difference. Wraparound policies will actually pay excess fire insurance if the fair plan policy that it's going with runs out of coverage. Huge difference because a DIC policy excludes any form of fire coverage. So my first point would be, Pay attention and find out for sure, is it a wraparound you're talking about or is it a DIC policy that you're talking about? I'm not personally familiar with the DIC policy that Aegis is offering, but if they are a non-admitted carrier, you would know right away because there are special forms that you have to fill out, special forms that you have to sign, and you have to be aware that the carrier is not licensed to do business in California. It doesn't mean they're a bad carrier. It just means they're not licensed to do business in California. The first thing I would also do is check at the California Department of Insurance website. There is a list of non-admitted carriers that the Department of Insurance has at least vetted and feels comfortable saying that they're safe, relatively speaking. Be sure that that carrier is listed on that list. I would be very concerned if they are not. And to answer your question, if they declare bankruptcy, you wouldn't be covered. There is no protection for California consumers for an insurance company that is not admitted in California. That is correct. So again, you need to make the decision, does it make more sense to have coverage with an admitted carrier that's more money or a non-admitted carrier that's not as expensive, but are they going to be there if you need them? And again, non-admitted carriers are not a bad thing, but they do lack certain consumer protections that admitted carriers want to have. Let's take another quick break. When we come back, we will hit some more questions. There are a bunch of them. Thank you so much for being here. Send your questions in as well. This is Insurance Hour, and I am your host, Carl Sussman, and we will be back in a flash. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And don't forget, click here to watch the next video.